The best part of our trip to Mongolia was being able to fellowship with the Mongolian Christians. God enabled me to see and know that He calls all people and all nations to be His children, and it was amazing to witness the joy of the students as they shared the gospel. God allowed me to see that He loves all His children so much that even in places like the countryside and in the poverty-stricken Gair district, He gives people such joy. Meeting Susan and learning about her work in the Gare district, adopting street kids to be her own children, actually living amongst those who are considered untouchable, I saw that in the face of all those things, she truly had joy in serving the Lord. God knows me so well and knows my desires to have fun and experience joy, and I could see that in any situation, He gives what is best for us, and I want to live in and through that faith. Much of my joy is based on how healthy I am. For much of the trip, I was afflicted with diarrhea. My sinful nature revealed itself to me when I was feeling sick. Even when I am feeling tired or sick, I need to rejoice in the Lord. I realize that I cannot depend on my own physical strength and health because those will eventually fail, but I must rely on God's strength. So when each of our team member was invited to go spend a night with um, the Bagano church member at their house just to get a Mongolian experience. Um, and when I realized that I was the only one going to the gear instead of an apartment like everyone else, I was slightly, I don't know, resentful or um, anxious about that whole experience. But I, through that experience, I realized that God was definitely in charge of all aspects of our lives. Um, because when I got there, even though I couldn't really um, speak to them in, in Mongolian, it turned out that the host daughter or the daughter of the family spoke Japanese because she was Japanese major. So it was just perfect that I was the one who actually was chosen to go to that house and I just learned so much about um, Mongolian life and their poverty and and through that experience I just was convicted in so many ways as to how I should um, spend my resources. So yeah, God was just sovereign over all things and that was just an amazing experience. I thank my wife Michelle for joining the team. When I first expressed my intent um, for joining the team, uh, she reluctantly said she would also consider joining the team as well. I was really surprised to um, hear that from her. Um, I never imagined that she could leave the kids for that long um, to come along to Mongolia with me. And I'm glad that uh, she was able to um, leave her comfort zone and actually uh, join the team and come to Mongolia as a couple. What I hate doing more than anything at church is talking to people I don't know. It all seems too forced or rather fake in my eyes. I immediately assume that I have nothing in common with these people, some of whom are carrying babies in their stomach while others talk amongst themselves about ladybug collections. On any given Sunday, one can say that in my heart there is no love. For the groom and the bride to say I do is to say that I love you regardless of your faults and strange hobbies and their habits. It is the greatest human representation of God's love for us. Romans tells us that love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. And I can't shake the fact that Tom and Nancy, Susan, Nobaksh, Colin, Chun, among others, are all there in Mongolia simply loving their Asian neighbors. And it seems only right that when I reached out with love, the Mongolians and I, even amongst the cultural and language barriers, were able to create such strong bonds and build the relationships that we have now. Being here has made me realize just how lucky we are to be surrounded by all the modern conveniences like hot water on command or well-paved roads or even fresh fruit all season long. But it also causes me to realize just how unlucky we are to return because we are surrounded by such a materialistic and self-centered society. I am especially worried about how I am going to adjust to working life in the corporate world. I can just imagine that while the changes will not be immediate, the convictions I have felt for the people here or my own identity 
as a Christian could erode. I don't want to compromise myself or identify with the world. Instead, I want to be known first as a child of God. My prayer is that I can be a witness at the workplace, that I will be set apart, and that God could use me in the new missions field back home. Thank you.